dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now, I am just so fucking excited for today's show, because it's been three years in the making. I've been trying to get this lady on the show. I am just oh, in awe of her as an actress. Uh, I think a lot of you out there uh, who grew up in the 80s and 90s is going to be excited for today's guest. I'm talking about Corinne Boyer. You all know her from such classics as Police Academy 4, Citizens on Patrol, Vice Versa, Joysticks. She was also in Zapped, Stewardess School. Oh, boy. So many great movies. She had her own uh, series called Free Spirit. She was on a series with James Gardner called Man of the People. I mean, she's got a huge, impressive resume. And I've, I've been just in awe of her since I was a kid. And I finally have her coming on the show today. I am just so excited. I'm the happiest fanboy in the whole wide world. It's going to be a great show. It's going to be just awesome. So, yeah, here is my interview with Corinne Boyer. Corinne? Yeah, hey. Hey, welcome to the show. How are you today? Good. Did you um, get to me through that link I sent you, or did it work just calling up my name? I, I did I did the link, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, good. It's, I had to start a whole new Skype account. Uh, you know, it's like upgrading the computer, and then everything sort of fell apart. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we're here. We found each other. Yes, I'm so happy about this. Uh, this is such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. You're welcome. Yes, as a kid who grew up in the 80s and 90s and being captivated by your smile, this is such uh, w wonderment to me. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> thanks. Absolutely. So, going back in time, uh, did you gravitate toward acting early on in your childhood? Um, that's so funny, uh, because I was just thinking about this today. Um, uh, my, I have four other brothers, mm -hmm. well, I'm not, yeah, four other siblings, and, uh, we used to make movies and write plays, and I think even earlier than the movies, my parents would be like, get out of the house, go write a play, like if they just wanted us to get out of their hair. Yeah. Um, so it probably started with us having to write little skits and plays, um, that would delve pretty quickly into, uh, like a Monty Python-esque, uh, thing, but, uh, yeah, started <laughs> with that, and then we made movies, and I was just thinking, because I wanted to get my, my brother, my big brother, to try to transfer everything off the, you know, what, Super 8 or whatever it was on, and mm -hmm. so that we can all see it. Yeah, so that's how it started, and then for years and years, I forgot about the joys and pleasures of doing that um, when it was just play, because you had to become something, you know, like, you, you had to go do something. It was not encouraged to go be an actress, of course. So um, it wasn't until, not meaning to get too heavy, until my father died unexpectedly when he was 42, Wow. I was like 23, I was in my last year of college, and he died unexpectedly, and I mean, it sounds so corny, but it was true, I just had a complete epiphany, like, oh my god, you can die, therefore, I was fearless, and I thought, when was I the happiest in my life, and I, went, I, I just thought back to those thing, times of making movies with my brothers, and I went, you know what, I may or may not be any good at this, but... I guess I need to either get in the car and drive to New York or get in the car and drive to L.A. And it seemed <laughs> like it was easier to get a parking space in Los Angeles. So wow. that's where I drove. And I'm for real that it was my thinking. I was I thought if all I own in my in the world is this little Dodge Colt that I can pack all my things. New York City seemed like a really hard place to like drive your Dodge Colt. 
and find a place to stay. So that I ended up in LA. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It sure, it sure helps to come from a creative family, though, I have to say. Yes, although it wasn't encouraged to actually become one of those things. Like, it was child's play. It was considered play, but it was not considered something that one did as a living. And that took me, it took, like, probably, yeah, so I don't know if I ever would have ever in a million years acted on that, no pun intended, Unless my father had died and I was in like a state of grief and fearlessness. Wow. So, on the other hand, my daughter had no interest at all in being an actor. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. oh, that's... <laughs> well, sometimes the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, but then sometimes, you know, you get lucky and the, the, the offspring doesn't want to do it. Wow. That, that is that is pretty heavy, but that is really, really inspiring, I have to say. Oh. Yes. So when you got I, to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I have a cat on the uh, keyboard. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say... Can you hear me well enough, by the way? Oh, yeah. I can hear you just perfect. Okay. When you got to L.A., um, did you study with any prominent teachers? Yes. My um, Kim Stanley... Uh, mm -hmm. who's a giant, and um, Peggy Fury is the one I studied with the longest. Um, but, yeah, so uh, Peggy Fury, who's, you know, an amazing method acting teacher. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, in my class, I think we had, you know, Sean Penn, Meg Tilly. Uh, <laughs> just, it was just an incredible class where she took, you know, one playwright, and we really went into it for like six weeks at a time. And um, that was my, I was, I don't think I started off with her, but I found her. And I, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember my very first acting teacher. And I can't, because I'm this COVID-19, man, my brain is turning to mush. So if I have recall <laughs> problems, just excuse me today. I'm oh, trying yeah. to drink as much coffee as I can. Same here. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I've, I've talked to a few people who have uh, studied with Peggy Fury. and. Oh, really? Oh, really? Who? Who? Oh, God. I, they were in my class. <laughs> they probably were. I, I, I interviewed so many people. I wish I could remember right now. Maureen uh, McCormick? Maureen, no. I would love to interview Maureen. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's become a friend of mine, so I'll put in a good word for you. Oh, thank you. Yes, I saw you uh, advertise her book on Instagram. <laughs> well, she's just like so. We were not really close back then, mm -hmm. and to me, like probably you and everybody else, she was like, I didn't even think she lived in the same planet that I did, right? Because she right. was like on the TV, and I didn't even know we were close to the same age. I I don't know why. It's like that thing of celebrity. They seem like other. You know, and so much other that um, even in, when she was in my acting class, I didn't know her that well. It wasn't until probably, I think I was tweeting her when she was on Dancing with the Stars. And I honestly, <laughs> I was just tweeting out, you know, like, go girl, like I'm with you. And I was so taken with her and her husband's story. And that's how we kind of became friends was years later through, you know, tweeting. Yeah, the internet brings people together. You know? <laughs> anyway, okay, so go, what's the next thing? In 1982, you were on a roll, starting with the telekinetic classic Zapped. Hmm. Zapped. Okay, now, 80, really, so it's so interesting you have all these dates. I have to sometimes go back to my IMDb and figure out when all this stuff happened. Yeah, that was one of the first... That's not the first thing I ever did, though, is it? Um, the 19th. Zap was like the Scott Bayo one, right? Scott, or? Scott Bayo, yes. It, it's in chronological order on IMDb. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Came out, um, yeah. Well, all I really remember from that is like wearing a prom dress and dancing. And I mostly, like a lot of actors, even though for you it's the movie, I should go back and rewatch the movie because I'm not sure. I'm embarrassed to say this, that I've ever even watched the whole movie. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I remember because when you're working, you're so, I rem 
remember I made one of the best friends of my life because we were wedged on a little bench together and we were cheerleaders. She was one of the cheerleaders, Roseanne Caton. Uh -huh. And she was in that movie, and I became a very, very good friend of hers throughout my whole life. And that's how I remember that movie. And I'm pretty sure it was that one and not the next one. What was the one after this? No, it was on the Scott Bayo one, for sure. Um, yeah. uh, my Favorite Year. Oh, now when was that? Was that after that? Uh, it was 1982. I don't know if it was... Yeah, the one you made right after, though. My favorite year was the very, very first, first time I think I had walked out onto a set and, like, shot anything. No, no, no. It was that one with, because I just posted on Instagram, that one in the, with Lisa, who later became Dr. Oz's wife. <laughs> Did you see that picture? Yeah. The very, very first thing, I was just basically girl number one and girl number two in something called... Jekyll and Hyde, or Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde mm -hmm. at Paramount. That was the very, very first thing, but all we really had to do was be, you know, kind of models, like go out in our skippy little outfits and gesture to something. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing was my favorite year, which became such a wonderful movie. But again, I was girl number one and girl number two. Uh, but I do have memories of that scene and memories, of course, of Peter O'Toole. Oh. And shooting that because he took like 35 takes to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was, it was a good thing because I was petrified, you know, I was so nervous. And I hadn't had really a lot of acting training at that point. So I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I was, yeah, it was good that they have those tiny parts in the beginning for sure. Yeah. I, I, my high school did the play the year after I left. I wish they did it um, uh, while I was there because they did a really great job. <laughs> oh, my favorite year? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you played Cowgirl Susie and They Call Me Bruce. Man, that one, I really don't remember at all. I know it sounds terrible, but I don't... <laughs> I, I think, like, I remember driving to Malibu. I, I remember, I mean, a lot of these things, you got to, you know, they don't give the actor, in, in those days, we didn't have the internet and all that, so right. I never had access to even see the movie. Because little tiny parts like that, you're not really invited to the Premier. screens. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I don't even remember that movie. That's, that's terrible. They don't invite you to the premiere, even though you're uh, on screen for, yeah. like, 10 seconds. <laughs> with Eric um, who was Eric Stoltz because he was in my acting class and we did one about surfing yeah. that was a, remember surf two, surf 2 yeah that one I can recollect just because you know I remember doing actual scenes in it I remember Eric but I don't remember that Bruce one really mm. at all I mean I may uh, you know you can joggle my memory but was I in a lot of it <laughs> Because <laughs> my brain, I, I hope I'm not getting. I have I haven't seen this one in a long time. I, I watch the second one all the time because I have that one. But... There's the second one. Oh yes, oh. and it's actually oh. better than the first. <laughs> of the Bruce movie. Yeah. The one that's got now. What is the name of it again? It's called uh, the the one you were in is called They Call Me Bruce. Oh and okay. The second one is They Still Call Me Bruce. Oh, that's so funny. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm not offending anybody. I'm going to look it up because maybe I, maybe I don't want to, yeah, I, I'm going to, I should probably go back and watch my old classics. Yeah, you got any uh, great stories about Surf 2? Um, <clears throat> I, uh, Surf 2, Surf 2, um, well, I don't know. Eric was a good friend because he was in Peggy Fury's class with me. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there was another actor in that. And I guess the only weird thing is now that we've got Wikipedia and all this stuff telling how much, you know, back in the day, nobody cared how old anybody was. Yeah. <laughs> and now, and so honestly, the last like five years or so, I've started noticing, oh my God, I was older than those people. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, any fun stories from the. I mean, it was really fun. I remember it being really fun. And oh, I've got a good one. 
Mm-hmm. It was really fun because we're shooting in Malibu and there's a lot of comedy and it was, yeah, I like the director. Um, and uh, one day we, oh, and also I got to wear that fun surf punk outfit, like, because we got changed into punks. Yeah. I and mean, that's always fun. You're playing like a nice, something little surfer girl. And then we got to wear, you know, crazy uh, wetsuits. And uh, I've got a good picture of that somewhere. And here's the good story about this. We were shooting Malibu next to the pier and had to do things like where we actually, you know, were in the water and got brought out of the water, jumping in and out. Turns out there was a great white shark that did, like later on that night, like literally hours later, a great Mm. white attacked somebody. Mm. And we were right there at the end of the pier in a, in a raft with, you know, the camera crew and everything else. And I was jumping in and out of the water where there, you know, two hours later, there was a great white attack on somebody. Wow. But that was my story in my brain because I'm just, I have a whole thing about sharks. What great whites. I don't know why. I'm terrified. Wow, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so that's a good story about that. Um, something at, what else is trying to come into my brainwaves here uh you do you remember anything about eddie deason oh yeah you know what i saw him recently in the lobby of my agents and i didn't think to say i didn't even want to say hi because i didn't think he would remember me isn't that terrible <laughs> yeah. I, just have a, I just remember oh he's because he had a meeting with my agents and uh, you know you don't want to interrupt i just didn't feel like going by but he seemed really fun and really sweet yeah so did the girl. Who was the actress, the beautiful blonde girl? Uh, Lucinda Dooling? No, but Lucinda was a good... Oh, we had so much fun. She's the reason it was fun. We became... Yeah, I loved her. I love, love, loved her. What is she doing now? She actually passed away a couple of years <gasps> ago. Yeah. What? Are yeah. you kidding me? No, I, I don't know what she passed away of, but I do know she passed away. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I feel horrible. Yeah, you just like, oh, no. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's all right because I'm having a, one of the reasons this week has been kind of hard is, you know, Lynn, um, the director, uh, God, it's right out of my brain. She she just passed away. Uh, Oh, Lynn Shelton. Yep, Lynn Shelton, man. And that hit me. I don't know why I had been watching glow really intensely like where literally i watched the entire thing over two nights like staying up till three or four in the morning mm-hmm. and yeah she I, and then like oh, her and mark, mark i just that that one really hit me yeah, yeah that week and also sam lloyd who i worked with on double rush uh passed away last week of a brain tumor and he had just had a new baby and i mean so sam lloyd that would got to me. I don't know. There was like Fred Willard. They oh, last week was yeah. a bad week and just so God, Lucinda, what the heck? Oh, that's not killing me. Okay. I'll look. We lost touch. I mean, it sounds really callous, but yeah, that weird thing, like on a show, you get really, really tight. And then when you're young and you're working from one project to the next, mm-hmm. then you're on another project and you're needing a whole circus full of new people and then you lose touch with people. It's terrible. I wish I, you know, done it differently, but yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. How about, uh, the immortal classic joysticks? Joysticks. Ray Don Baker. Ray Don Baker. Joe Don Baker. Joe Don Baker. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. I was like, yeah, because for me, like, I think I had seen, him and Walking Tall or something. So for me, he yeah. was just a huge movie star. Um, and Scott McGinnis. I think I did a terrible. All I remember is I think my Valley Girl thing was awful. Like I, <laughs> I didn't really like myself too much. In that. But you know, yeah, a lot of people have watched it, so I don't know what to say. But yeah, my Valley Girl impression because I didn't know. Coming from Texas, I really tried to look up what a valley girl would sound like, mm-hmm. and I think I overdid it really badly to compensate for my Texas accent. Wow. Yeah, I think you did a great job. As a oh, of fact. Hey. 
Yeah. I mean, it's a great, it's a great character, you know, um, she, you know, she's the, the, the mayor's daughter and she's a total yeah. free spirit, you know, and she's yeah. very supportive of the arcade. And I think you, you sold it very well. Oh, thanks. Of course. Of course. How about the notorious stewardess school? Oh, Adam Rosenberg. Alan Rosenberg. See how I'm saying everything weird? I'm worried I'm turning into. Um, Alan Rosenberg is one of the greatest actors ever, and I just, like, bow down to him. Anyway, he, oh, my friend Brett Cohen was in that. He lives down the street from me. Uh, oh. We're still friends it's because he's from Texas. I don't know why our families just became really close. Um, oh, Julia. Yep. Julie Montgomery. Yep. Love, love, love. Sending love to her in the ether space. Um... Yeah, that was, I remember it being really fun, and I loved my stewardess outfit. I didn't really like, I think I had to wear wigs. I was wearing a wig for, oh, again, I got transferred. That must have been the 80s where you got transferred from some really good person to a really funky person. Because I just remember I was wearing a wig, right? Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. And I got to ride on the back of that motorcycle with, that crazy big old motorcycle guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actor. yeah, I remember it's fun. It must be fun, interesting for you when you interview people going to the past like this. The things that I remember, you know, like yeah. the things that are important to you for your podcast in the movie. But when you bring it up, the things that trigger in me are usually like a moment, yeah. you know, something kind of sense memory, like riding on the back of that guy's motorcycle and laughing with Julia, you know, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Julia. Go. Yeah. Julia. Uh, she's coming back on again on uh, Monday as a matter of fact. No way. Oh, say, send her my love and tell her for God's sake, she needs to go. I think I have her number. I ran into her at a parking lot. We traded numbers, mm-hmm. but still haven't. Well, now we can't go hang out, but we could talk. Yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. I I had dinner with her last year in LA and it was just amazing. You know, she's oh, such a, she's such a great lady. And she's got such a great sense of humor, you know. I know she does. She does. She is she's just lovely. Love her. Yeah. Yeah, but uh this movie though, <laughs> I was reading that Columbia Uh, They kind of knew that this was uh, probably going to be the last teen movie they did for a while, so they put like $8 million into the movie, and it made like 100000 at the box office. (laughs) Wait, which one is this? Stewardess School. Stewardess School. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think it, yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, no comment because it's not fresh in my brain, but I just remember is it, you know, also as an actor, because by that time, of course, I thought I was such a, you know, trained actor, or I was really training and trying to learn, um, and felt pretty solid, but I, <laughs> to me, my job was just to go do my, you know, part, and for me, the whole completed thing, or it just, I was just so happy to just be a part of it, and to put my share of telling the story in there mm-hmm. that that's why sorry I'm probably a horrible person to like interview because the the piece as a whole I did it really I just went on and did thought my job was to go on and play my part of what was I Cindy or Tam all my names at that point were like Tammy Cindy Patty yeah. <laughs> anyway <laughs> but yeah uh now that I'm older and looking back I should go back and watch all of them again, but uh, yeah, no comment on how it all turned out because I, I have no idea. I don't remember watching it. Yeah, well, you're do, you're doing great so far, so don't worry about. Oh, that. okay, okay. Uh, but the 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 role that I first fell in love with you in, and your name did not end with a Y in this one. Oh. It was uh, Laura in Police Academy Four: Citizens on Patrol. Yep. Well, that was so fun. That was really fun, except I was in Toronto for so many months for doing a part of it probably could have been shot in several weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, I 
I mean, those scenes with Bobcat, I didn't know. I had I have lied and said I had watched the Police Academy movies, but I had not. Or I guess there was another one or three. Yeah, three of them before, and I had never seen any of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was very shocking to me when Bobcat was talking in that loud, weird voice when we were shooting. Yeah. <laughs> because before, which is why they got such a great take, uh, all that was shot in one take. Because I was flinching. You can see me later when you yeah. watch it back. I'm literally flinching every time he opens his mouth. Right. Because I am so shocked and horrified. I don't know what to do. But it made it really funny. Because yeah. I'm, I, I'm really, sh- uh, we shot all that in one take. Even the running through the forest stuff. Yeah. You can see I'm laughing. I'm breaking up laughing. Because I think as a child, when we used to shoot our movies, that's one of those things you want to do, right? Like, yeah. run in slow motion, but we didn't have a way to make it slow motion. So I literally tried to run in slow motion in the ones that I made with my brothers really young. So, yeah, getting to shoot a scene where I'm running in those combat boots and trying to run in slow motion was really, ugh. It was just, like, I think might be one of my favorite, favorite things. Just because it did connect to, you know, making movies as a kid. Yeah, I can tell you, you know, all of us, all, all of us guys and, and fans of the movie in general, we love that scene the most of that movie. <laughs> it's just it's so fun. And when I'm supposed to be throwing my hair around, like yeah. I'm supposed to be so sexy, you know, originally he's supposed to kiss me, but because he had just gotten married, oh. and so one of the reasons why I keep throwing my hair around, and it's, I think that comedy works so well, is because. Really, we were supposed to do the classic, oh, we spin around and we make out, we kiss. Mm -hmm. But because he wouldn't kiss me, because he just got married, I didn't know what to do, and I was still kind of an inexperienced actress, so I just kept throwing my hair around. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, as we're on a track, and the camera's going around us with that kind of Brian De Palma shot. Uh, (laughs) So when I watch it, I just, I just, I still, it makes me laugh, because I didn't know what to do except to just keep doing it until they said cut so that's why i think it's also so funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> it works it works yeah. you know and of course that first scene you two have you know at the uh, old lady's home with the poetry thing you oh know. yeah love that like who doesn't want to oh my dream is to be a librarian yeah so many things like you get to kind of play yeah to be a librarian and then turn into that another movie where they turn me from Oh, I'm a librarian into like this, like, wasn't I kind of wearing rock star outfits? And I tried to be a girlfriend to match him. So my outfits got to change from being the librarian to this rock star kind of girl, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God, that was so fun. <laughs> um, and, you know, I didn't know, and he's so well spoken, he knew so much. I had just gotten back from uh, Guatemala. No, was I in El Salvador? I was uh, working in a nonprofit called California. Now it's called Operation uh, USA. Back then it was called Op Op Cal or Operation California. Mm -hmm. And I went to Central America um, to help with some relief, with a relief shipment. And I just came home anyway, not to get in a whole off thing, but I was really, I, I was just like, you think you know things because you read the paper and you can have strong opinions. And boy, did I think I was really. And when you actually travel somewhere, it was just bringing up a lot of stuff. And Bobcat also knew what was going on in Central America. So right before we were shooting those scenes, he had come to my trailer to meet me. And we were having coffee and like talk, 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 talk. And he's very soft-spoken. You know, he's very, very intelligent and yeah. very soft-spoken. And when, honestly, I was, I was like, wow, I've met a new friend, like, you know, and, and then when we went to set and he started screaming like that, that's why it was the juxtaposition of him being, you know, whew, that was shocking and made for some pretty funny scenes. So that's my backstory to that. Yeah. I love it. It's great. I love uh, that scene you have in uh, Cross My Heart where you're holding the shotgun. <laughs> okay, cross my heart. Cross my heart. Mo- Maybe some 
Martin Short, uh, Paul Reiser. Uh, oh, right, and I'm on the balcony, yes. Well, you know, I had originally read for the lead in that, but they wouldn't... Um, God, I read for a few things for Larry Kasdan, and he just thought that I couldn't play old enough to play the wife, and I was so disappointed because while I was still in Canada shooting Police Academy, and there was a movie of the week I shot there with, um, God, there was a movie of the week I shot in Canada. I was in Canada for like eight months, so I had to fly to New York City to read for the Cross My Heart one, Mm -hmm. and did not get it ultimately because me and uh, Martin Short, I don't know, didn't, didn't work, but he gave me that part on the balcony, which I'm appreciative of. Yeah. If, if you had played um, a Ned O'Toole's uh, role in that, would you have been okay about doing nudity? Wow, did she have a lot of nudity in that? Oh, yeah, because they're, 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 trying, they're trying to have sex, but they're both so nervous. Oh, wow. Interesting. Well, it never came up because I never got that close to getting the job. I do remember, like, the screen test of it back in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah... Yeah, did it did it gel with Martin Short and I? He's so brilliant and funny, but yeah, I think the biggest problem is I wasn't acting mature enough, which is my problem. I never, I just, have to I just keep playing younger than my real age, and it was an issue because yeah, but some parts I couldn't. Uh, what did he say to me, Larry Kasdan, about? He goes, "Well, older older women are have a." calmness or they're more taught you know they're not and you're still I was still just so excited I think about I don't know my my whole I was just couldn't play old enough and boy I gave myself uh I was just self um I was just upset with myself because I thought I should know how to do this if I'm going to be a great actor why can I not play older and now I will get off my uh case about it but <laughs> I was mad at myself. Uh, another role of yours I love is uh, in Vice Versa. Yes, with Judge. Yep. And yeah. um, Fred Savage. And Freddie, oh my God. Yes. Yes, that was that was quite amazing. And the thing I most remember is uh, Thailand. Mm-hmm. Shooting in Thailand was just like it was hot as hell, man. We just sweat through everything and nearly fainted. But it was, it was, that was quite a thing. In fact, I wrote something. I write fiction or was writing fiction before I had my daughter mm-hmm. and want to do it again. I want to do a whole thing up called Locations and just stories about um, being on location. And oh, there will be, yeah. Uh, because Bangkok is such a different place, like with the the smells and the heat and the, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Was there? A, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Was, no. was there any reservation on your part um, in the scene where you almost kissed Red Savage? Uh, no. I mean, it, it probably felt a little weird and awkward, but I right. don't remember it. It hasn't stuck with me all these years. I remember just <laughs> Fred being such a joy and I, I just remember worrying about him being, <laughs> being in the makeup trailer hearing people if they you know use the f word or I, I mostly was like wow that little kid is getting a dose of grown up uh grown-ups you know into their 10th hour of work being tired and we'd forget that he was a little kid which turned out to be okay because he had amazing parents and he grew up into such a great kid he's directing now yeah yeah. I heard about that. Yeah, because I've talked to a lot of actors who um, have been in that situation where they have to do a scene where they have to either kiss someone who in reality is underage or hint it, you know, and they say it's just, it's the most uncomfortable feeling in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was uncomfortable with not. I knew I wasn't going to have to do it. If I had to actually make out with him, it would be, ugh. I know one, a kissing thing that, um, because I'm really, really good friends with Brett Colin, who's in the new Joker movie, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, he and I had a scene in, um, what was that golf movie? What was the golf thing that I did? Anyway, he and I were supposed to be 
making out and um, actually having sex, I think, but they, in the background, were supposed to be kissing, and that was impossible. It was so awful, because it would be like kissing your friend. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like kissing your brother. That's what it felt like. I was like, I can't, you know, he was like, oh my God, I can't do it. I can't do this. And I go, I know, I know, just put your lips really tight together and pretend like it's in the 40s, how they used to do screen kissing. Mm-hmm. And it was still gross. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I get it. It's that gr- it's the ick factor. And I was like, come on, we're actors. We can make out. But, yeah, we just kind of fake kissed. Yeah. And, uh, Gloria Gifford plays judge's secretary. She's great. She's, oh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. She's a very respected acting teacher these days and stuff. I've been trying to get her on the show for, like, two years. Hopefully it's going to happen. Yeah. And, oh, you know who else was in that? Jane Kaczmarek. Oh, yeah. Loved her. Yeah, was she great? Yeah, really. Yeah, she's a very talented lady. And then uh, you got the star in your own series called Free Spirit. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep, I sure did. How? how, Howard. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say... how was that experience, and why did it end so quickly? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think they had to pull the plug before we had 22 shows, so they pulled it at 21 or something, but because then they have to, I don't know, it's a money business thing. Um, you know, the original guy who was Chris Rich, I believe, who is hired to play the husband, mm-hmm. and he was amazing. He was just so funny and so good. And I really think the show, I don't know why he got replaced. And then he got replaced and I, the other guy, he, must, he seems, I, he, it was just weird, honestly. It was one of those things where, yeah, I don't know what the deal was with the new actor, but he, he wanted to be on 30 something, you know, he did mm. not want to be on a comedy show. He was like, Mr. You know, he was very serious and, and which might have worked now, the way they're doing, black, you know, comedies. But back then in the 80s with the, you know, the rhythm of it and the comedy and the the bigness of it, he was doing a different kind of comedy. And it just, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we all did not. Yeah, it wasn't fun and kind of sucked the energy out. And I don't know. I, to this day, I don't know why that guy got fired, the original guy. Because, again, they're not telling the actors. Not even the stars of the show. I don't know. Yeah, that's a... you go to work one day and you have a different person, and nothing against him. It was just a different style of, of acting. So I'm not sure. But oh my God, Allison, love, love, Allison, and and he did. Now it's all coming back to me. Edon, mm-hmm. the little boy. Yeah. I love them. And what was the name of the and uh oh the the kid who played Allison's brother big brother loved him too like we all i just uh, yeah i miss them and i think i got to work with uh it's kind of sad now after watching all these animal things uh uh, michael jackson's monkey got to be in a scene i remember succinctly that guy was his board like just that poor now uh after watching all this tiger what's it called the tiger uh just that watching things about, you know, wild animals in Hollywood, it just makes me sad now thinking back because I don't think that was a very happy gorilla yeah. or chimpanzee. Sorry, wrong. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, but that was great. I mean, you know, I was really fortunate. It was it was great. Yeah. In the late, uh, it's a shame. Yeah. In the late 80s, there was all these, you know, writers and producers who had grown up in the 60s on all the fantasy shows like Bewitched and I Dream of Genie and My, My Favorite Martian. And then they're trying to like bring back the genre with there was shows like this and Out of This World and Small Wonder. And they just, you, you couldn't pull it off in the 80s, you know? It was just a different time. Yeah, but maybe they could have pulled it off if they, like that the new actor was trying to do, maybe they should, if it was a filmed show, like more like Modern Family. And yeah. it had the writing behind it, then it would have been a different style, and I think that would have worked better than the form, the three camera sitcom. 
and maybe that's what did. But honestly, the first guy who was playing my husband, he was so funny and knew that format so well. And I really think it could have worked because he was so fun. So there was just no chemistry between me and the guy when they fired Chris. Mm -hmm. So I really think that was the problem. He was the new guy, and I'm blocking his name because, yeah, I must. He, it just wasn't fun, and he wasn't doing funny stuff. Like, we needed a, what's that guy? My daughter loves watching him. Um, oh, come on. Tim Allen? Yeah, Tim Allen. You needed a guy like that, like somebody who's going to have fun and be the dad and be the, a you know, like somebody funny and sexy and. You know, like, I couldn't care. I needed a solid dance partner, and I didn't have it. We were just basically doing, you know, little funny things here or there. So it's it's too bad. Yeah. I know I'm going to sound like I'm blaming it on that actor. <laughs> it is not his fault, really, right? Because no. somebody fired the other guy and cast him. And, you know, a lot of times as an actor, you don't know what you're getting. We didn't know. You don't know until you're much older all these different styles and formats and how they're shooting it and how it's going to look. And you can study your kind of acting, but it's very different, you know, to be studying method acting and Peggy Fury's class and then suddenly get thrown onto a sitcom. I think I wasn't really that good in that show. Like a lot of times I have to cringe when I watch it. I mean, I'm trying my best, but I'm, I, I didn't really know what I was doing either. Yeah. So it's hard. You don't learn that in acting. Well, maybe they do now. They should teach them all the different, like, or I wish, like, the director and the producer and everybody would just, they don't really discuss, like, this is, well, maybe they do now. But back then, you're just kind of thrown out into, okay, now there's an audience there, and we're supposed to do this. So yeah. a lot of times you're playing to the audience, and it looks different on a camera. But, yeah. How was, yep. how was working with James Gardner on Man of the People? Oh, yay. Oh, <laughs> and those are, you know, the phone show is a little bit easier, right? You don't have to do such a guessing game. You can just be honest and truthful and still have fun. But mm -hmm. he, he was amazing. I I think he always had a gun on his ankle. But <laughs> 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 he was, uh, you know, he was just lovely. Uh, well, the word lovely just comes to mind, you know, just really a lovely human being and everything you would think about him is really true. Mm -hmm. It's just, just a, oh yeah, he was great. And I loved shooting with Romy. Wall, mm -hmm. wall, I'm butchering her last name, but she was fun too. Yeah. Romy played the blonde, the girl in the office. Yeah. I've, I've heard that uh, James Gardner was a great guy, but he didn't suffer any fools. <laughs> right, no. I remember he just used to give us little lectures, like one time a guest star wrote a thank you letter to him, mm -hmm. which to me was kind of like, ah, uh, sucking up, sucking up. But actually, Jim was very affected by it and would go like, see, this is what you guys should do. This shows, like, respect that he sent a nice letter and I will remember this guy's name. Um, and I did work with that guy later. Um, I can't remember the name. On a commercial many years later. And I said, yeah, Jim really, really read your letter to all of us and said, this is what we should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize <clears throat> for thinking you were a suck up because actually it was like a really nice thing to do. Oh, yeah. I used to have um, on, on VHS the uh, trickster episodes of The Flash, and you did one of them. Oh, God. Well, now, I mean, I really, the only reason I'm so in my brain is because when they, it before they asked me to come back to shoot one, you know, I guess it was actually two years ago now, right? In November. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when we, I had to go back and rewatch the first one that I did that in the 90s and man I played a good psychotic I actually really liked my performance which is rare mm -hmm. um oh yeah that's why I didn't ever want to watch myself I never watched myself in any of those shows because 
probably have self-esteem issues, but I feel I felt like my work is finished and I can't change it. So what's the point of watching it again? Ugh, I was so unbearable. Um, most, most actors. Yeah, so, yeah, the Flash was so great. Um, my memories of the original Flash are getting shooting really, really late. Back a lot of Paramount. That scene in the bubble gum where I'm standing there in the bubble gum, mm-hmm. and and I'm basically wearing tights and a you know swimsuit with a, like a silk floppy thing on my neck, and I'm freezing. It's three in the morning, and I fell asleep. I literally <laughs> didn't fall asleep standing up. And I was too much, and I was like, I can't fall down, I can't fall down, because I was in the middle of that scene, and it was a crane shot in the city of Gotham or wherever. Yeah, but everybody, I have good memories. And of course, uh, my favorite line of all time with uh, Mark, with Mark's driving the semi truck. And I'm in it, and he has to push me out of the of the truck and say, how can I miss you if you won't go away? <laughs> and that's my yeah. favorite. I've said that so many times. <laughs> anyway, a lot of great quotes from that. The writers, every, everybody involved in that show was so cool. Yeah, Danny Bilson, he's been on yeah, here. Yeah, Danny Bilson, oh my God. And um, Joyce Heiser, she's been on yeah. here three times. Love her. Oh, Love her. Joyce, yeah. I got and now, and also, uh, now who, uh, uh, come on, friend. Um, ah, he played the Flash. What's the matter with me? The Flash? Uh, John Wesley yes. Ship? John, yes, yes. Because um, yeah. <laughs> now we all got closer just because of going into the past and then reaching out to those guys because now, you know, we're all Instagram friends and stuff. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of poor John man having to like didn't that cost him and he never complained one time. <laughs> you don't know, like that guy, like he had to be on a plank and they would kinda of lower it for him to rest. Otherwise he had to stay standing. He couldn't eat or drink or go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he never once complained. I mean, to me, I would have been complaining. So, you know. Those yeah. people I'm always like, Wow. <laughs> He's yeah. a better person than me. Um and Mark Hamill, of course, nicest course. guy in the whole wide world. Nicest, most fun guy. I don't know what he eats to be. <laughs> I would, I just, he's just continued to be, even when, yeah. So I love him. And my new thing I'm doing, the new Flash, is is my fake son, Devin Gray, is now my real fake son. Like, I <laughs> really, really love him. And I he's going to be in my life forever because I really love him. And we're working, actually, please tell all your listeners to watch Devin's movie that's now number one on uh, uh, Amazon it, called I See You with Helen Hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, that was his first thing that he ever wrote that got produced, and now he's working on another one for Paramount. But, uh, yeah. I see and what you. else? Oh, we're doing a little YouTube thing now. I'm helping, well, you know, I'm just helping him to shoot while we're in this quarantine. So we've been doing shooting scenes over FaceTime. No, over, not Skype. I think we did it over FaceTime. Uh, but yeah, so that's been kind of fun. You have a good story about Revenge of the Nerds 4? Uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, yeah. Love, love, love that. Oh, my God. I just loved everything. I love the, I loved my outfits. I love because I got to snort when I laugh. Because yeah. <laughs> I do that. I don't know where I picked that up. Somewhere in Texas. I'm going to blame Texas. But, uh, yeah, like, just, I really loved it. Oh, yeah, Julia again. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, so fun. Um, and I did get to go to the, we all went to the premiere on an old yellow bus. They picked us up, and it was really fun. Yeah, it's funny how you went from uh, Bobcat to Booger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same, yeah, archetype, same archetype, I would say. I, I lo- yeah, I love the scene where you two are, like, trying to out- outdo each other and burping. <laughs> yeah, so fun. My mother did not like that movie at all. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny how she, like, said, like, well, what did you think? Because I was so, pr- I had so much fun, and I think that, I don't know, her, it was funny to hear my mom kind of be like, 
well, honey, I don't really like all the, you know, bathroom jokes or something like that. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, she's not going to like that five-minute burping. You know what? I should pull that up and put it on my Instagram. You should. <laughs> Flashback Fridays. You should. I don't even know if I have the movie. I'm sure I can find that on YouTube, though. Yeah. That would be, that was crude, but funny. The, the night that it premiered, there was like a 3D glasses promotion from 7-Eleven for it, I remember. And I, I watched it with the 3D glasses. I'm like, this is so cool. You know, I wish I, I, wish I still had them. <laughs> Aww. I was like 10 at the time. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I guess I never, you know, now that we all have Instagram and on Twitter and all this stuff, like you can kind of have an immediate feeling of what, how people are responding to it. And it means Back then, I was still in this world where, yeah, you just did it, and you kind of didn't have any connection with, you know. And we were kind of scared of fans because it was that, remember, it was that era where that girl that was on My my Sister Sam got shot? Yeah. Uh, there was all this stuff where you were not supposed to write back to fans. You were not supposed to have any kind of connection to them. Yeah. So that's when I kind of, you know... <clears throat> of age and this fear it was more like a fear thing and now it's like my god people just have completely open instagrams and yeah i'm trying i'm really trying hard to be more yeah even though now who cares so. yeah. <laughs> well you're you're doing a great job corinne you know i'm trying to eco another well i had to quit that's jumping ahead but when my daughter oh. i when i was uh let's see uh after i had my dad i think she was three or four when uh veronica mars when they talked to me and that i had taken myself out of all television and theatrical and only left commercials there because i just wanted to be a you know more of a mom and people don't realize like when you're working you're working 15 hours a day and upwards to 20 hours a day on Fridays when they can work even later. So I was just like, oh, my God, I'll never see my child. I'm just going to be a mom and shoot commercials. And they talked me into coming out of that um, that scenario for uh, Veronica Mars. But then my daughter almost had a horrible accident in the hotel mm. with a nanny while I was shooting Veronica Mars. Uh, she got locked in a hotel room. And because my name was not listed and the nanny's name wasn't listed on paying for that room, they couldn't unlock it. Wow. So there was a big drama and I got scared and I said, that's it. I need to be a good mom and not be on TV. And stupidly, that's the biggest regret is that I, I pulled myself out of uh, Veronica Mars because I was just thought I can't keep my kids safe. But I was probably overreacting but i just had no support anywhere so i yeah um that's yeah i don't know why i jumped ahead to that we probably weren't even on veronica mars that's okay <laughs> uh, where were we in, in... Uh, we were in revenge of the nerds 4 but uh, okay. that's okay you jumped ahead though because that's very admirable and uh, well no no it's not admirable probably more admirable would have been figuring out how to way to balance you know work and being a good parent, but as a single parent, it's just so horrible because you get, you just get a call. It was shooting in San Diego. I would get a call on Wednesday, you know, saying, okay, you need to be in San Diego. And I, it's like, how do you do that with a little kid, with mm -hmm. a two year old? So, and they're waking up at six in the morning, wanting to go to SeaWorld and I'm getting off work at three 30 in the morning. It was so grueling. I just can't. I just couldn't figure out how to make it work. But that's the only one. It's such a great show. I feel bad that I, you know, I, I feel bad about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, Corinne, there's this uh, game that I like to indulge my guests in. Okay. And what this is is it's uh, silly slumber party questions. And. <laughs> How this works is, <clears throat> um, I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me the exact same question, and I answer it. Okay. 
Corinne, are you ticklish? Yes. Are you ticklish? I am baby ticklish. Yes. <laughs> I'm very ticklish, and my brothers used to torture me by holding, which is so I hate. I consider it a form of torture. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a pleasure at all. It's like I lived in fear of like my brothers. Because it was not, it's not pleasurable now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, is your belly button an innie or an outie? Innie? Yours? An innie. Uh, what color are your toenails painted? No color. Same with me. Oh, yours? Oh, oh, what color are your toenails painted? Same with me. Last time they were painted, they were purple with sparkles. There you go. Yeah, I like to do bright colors. Oh. What would you say is your best personality trait? That I'm curious. Curious. Yeah. What do you think your best personality trait is? My sense of empathy and the fact that I have no filter. Oh, that's a good one. See, you've had time to think about it, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> And then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Cat food. Like cheap canned cat food. Yeah, that would be a good one. I have a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I will not be, you know, I have, I have cats and I just refuse to feed them that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't deal with cat food. I don't know where it happens. Somewhere along the way growing up and I just, yep, not. Well, all right, and for you? Um, okay, so I've told this to a lot of people, and if they have uh, kids, this does not affect them. Farts and feet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stand those smells. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, those smells I cannot deal with. <laughs> okay, that's understandable. Yeah. Well, Corinne, this was such a dream. Thanks for finally making this happen. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're it. welcome. I got my Skype working now. <laughs> yes, mine too. You know, and I'll, you know, if, if someone suggests this in the future, I'll, I'll do, I'll probably do it more often because this actually worked out pretty good. Yeah, and also people have, like, I have a couple microphones that if the sound wasn't good, that I could have plugged in so that my sound could have been better. Yeah. They can plug into the computer. Uh, but now that people only have, like, one phone, it just gets to, like, mm, you don't really want to call on your cell phone. Uh, but, yeah, that was, that was, I'm sorry, I should, uh, I hope that my energy level and, uh, you know, with this COVID thing, quarantine, I'm not quite in my, you know, happiest place right now. <laughs> A lot, a lot of us aren't, but no, yeah. you, you, you were just great, and oh. uh, uh, I hope, um, you know, after quarantine ends, uh, you have some uh, great projects that are going to happen, and until then, just stay safe and keep smiling and posting great pictures on Instagram. Oh, yeah, tell people to follow me on Instagram, but oh, spell it one R and two N's, that's my pet peeve. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, according to my agent, I have no uh, followers, so I don't know if that's something I'm doing wrong, and who cares in the end. But yeah, so tell people to follow me on Instagram. I need to do that for some reason that I don't understand. Just remember, agents aren't always right. So. Oh, true, true. Yes. True, true. <laughs> well, Corinne, you have yourself a great day, and again, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. This should have been our practice one. <laughs> <laughs> you should have done one like there was a dress rehearsal and then done another one where I, like, was more prepared. Well, but in a weird way, you might have gotten some good stuff just because I'm so, like, inexperienced at this. No, this this was great, and uh, you're always welcome to come back on again. All right. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you. My pleasure. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Corinne Boyer. Ain't she a sweetheart? 
Oh, what a nice lady she is, huh? And I am just so excited I got to interview her today. I am just so lucky. I can't say enough. She was great. You know, she may have had low energy, but she's great. Please follow her on Instagram. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, There's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes!